In a world where honor and integrity are held in high regard, there are individuals who have faced a grave injustice. Imagine dedicating your life to serving your country, only to have your reputation tarnished by false allegations. These brave men and women have faced the unthinkable, being accused of stealing valor, claiming military achievements they never earned. Here is the list of the five falsely accused veterans of stolen valor. Five, Marine Corps veteran Michael Delphin. He served our country in combat, but this Marine Corps vet says he was attacked by someone who believed that he was lying about his military service. The Sacramento vet says his attacker should have known better. Christina Sam, this happened over the weekend at the Arden area bar here behind me. This Marine Corps vet says this guy was looking for a fight, tried to say he had never served, and then jumped him right there in the parking lot. I know said guy had a fade and asked me to in the service. He's like, yeah, I'm in the Air Force. Well, that's cool. I was in the Corps. Leaning on crutches to keep weight off his broken right leg, Michael Delphine says his attacker had an active Air Force ID. So I asked him to read my ID, and he was like, no, no. I started yelling, stolen valor, stolen valor. This guy's a fake. Since he's no longer active duty, Michael's ID is different. But he was accused of lying about serving stolen valor. He's ignorant. He needs to learn how to read an ID. Plain and simple. When a vet tells you he's a vet and he's obviously wearing a Fallen Brothers bracelet, he doesn't even recognize that. The Sacramento vet says he wanted no part of it and tried to leave the Arden Bar long shot, but was blindsided in the parking lot. And before I knew it, I couldn't get off the ground and try to get up. My leg gave out. It's kind of a blur. He says he was jumped by the first guy and one of his friends. Michael's tibia is broken. His jaw might be too. And as for the claim of stolen valor, Michael's service was very real. I did uh, over 12 years in the Marine Corps. I was in amphibious assault, I was a tracker, and uh, I was in combat in 2004 in Fallujah. He says he was in combat in one of the bloodiest battles since Vietnam. This is him in Fallujah. The marks in the wall behind him are bullet holes. So to be accused by someone in the military of making it up, to Michael, it's the ultimate disrespect. Because everybody in the service actually does their job, but when you go to combat, it's a different thing. So to claim on me stolen valor, that's a slap in every veteran's face. He needs to get caught. He needs to get made an example of, plain and simple. Four, Marine veteran Robert Ford. He was falsely accused of stolen valor by a Harrisburg police officer. The incident happened during the festival at Riverfront Park. The former Marine says this is where the officer publicly called him a fake. This is the most humiliating thing that has ever happened to me in my life. 75-year-old Robert Ford, a Marine veteran who did six years of service, says he wore his uniform to a memorial ceremony at ArtsFest, and police detective John O'Connor questioned what he was wearing. I told him I was in the 6th Marine Regiment, and I was a machine gunner, a flamethrower. Ford says 15 minutes later, O'Connor demanded to know where he went to boot camp, but he did not tell him. He was yelling at the people, pointing at me. He can't tell me where he went to boot camp. He's not a real Marine. You know? Ford says O'Connor and an Army veteran continued to harass him and accused him in public of stolen valor. Now, the mayor expressed his regrets about this incident. The city said that the Army veteran demanded that police investigate whether Ford was a Marine impersonator for profit, which is illegal. Reporting in Harrisburg, Portia Johnson, News 8. Three, Army veteran Ernest Walker, who gained public attention in 2016 when he was falsely accused of stolen valor. The incident occurred at a Chili's restaurant in Cedar Hill, Texas, where Walker, who was wearing his military uniform and accompanied by his service dog, was confronted by a manager who questioned his military service and accused him of not being a real veteran. But then Ernest Walker and his attorney met with reporters here this afternoon after a meeting with Chili's parent company was postponed. Now, in the meantime, people on behalf of the company have expressed some regret about what happened here. Today, Video of a Chili's manager snatching the meal Army veteran Ernest Walker received as part of the restaurant's Veterans Day tribute sent shockwaves across the internet. Our story on the incident drew hundreds of comments and thousands of reactions on Facebook, but Walker says the response he wants is from Chili's. I personally have not heard from them, no. 
Chile's parent company, Brinker International, sent us a written statement that reads in part, quote, We are taking this very seriously, and the leaders in our company are actively involved with the goal of making it right, end quote. The restaurant chain also posted several responses to customers on its Facebook page, writing in part, quote, Unfortunately, we fell short on a day that we strive to honor our veterans and active military for their service. That's fine. They got to do what they do. I'm not a company. I'm just me. Walker says on Veterans Day, a manager told him customers had questioned whether he was really a veteran. So he showed the manager his identification along with his military discharge document as proof of his service. While much of the public response since then has been in support of Walker, some have voiced suspicions about his uniform. He says he bought after he retired to wear on Veterans Day as tribute to his prior service. This is what I'm able to wear, excuse me, okay? <laughs> and I purposely don't wear rank or name tag as not to be identified as an active soldier. Walker's attorney, Kim Cole, says an attorney for Brinker has apologized to her on behalf of the company, and the two sides plan to meet on Monday to discuss the incident. I certainly hope that Brinker International takes a stand and makes it clear that they don't condone that type of uh, that type of behavior in their establishment. Now Walker tells us he plans to file assault charges against the manager he says made physical contact when he took back his free meal. However, he also says he's a forgiving person and he hopes meeting with Brinker will be a positive step. Two. Army veteran Mark Dominguez in San Diego was confronted by service members who noticed that he was improperly wearing his uniform. His attire raised suspicions about his veteran status, as he seemed to wear everything incorrectly. However, according to ABC 10 San Diego, the Army confirmed that Dominguez had served briefly despite his unconventional uniform appearance. Dabbing in the gas lamp last week, a lot of people thought that the suspect was an imposter. I don't know if you could tell in that video. He was wearing a uniform, a military uniform, that a lot of people thought was fake. But it turns out he did serve in the military. 10 News anchor Lindsay Pena in the newsroom. I'm curious as to what you found out. Yeah, and a lot of people thought this guy was impersonating a member of the military, but he did, in fact, serve in the Army. His name, Mark Dominguez. It took us a little while to confirm that information because the incident happened on Friday, which was the observed day of Veterans Day. Now, according to the military, Dominguez served as a private first class from February 2003 until August of 2004. We're also told he was awarded the National Defense Service Medal, Army Service Ribbon, and Global War on Terrorism Service Medal. I want to show you some video from last week. Dominguez was arrested in the gas lamp on Friday wearing the uniform that sparked so much controversy. Police say he got into a heated argument with a group of active military and vets who pointed out some issues with that uniform. They said he was missing a patch and displaying his rank upside down. Now, the argument escalated and Dominguez allegedly pulled a knife and stabbed one of them multiple times. The victim was taken to the hospital but is expected to be okay. As for Dominguez, he has an arraignment hearing scheduled for Wednesday. He remains in jail. His bail has been set at $30,000. In the newsroom, Lindsay Pena, 10 News. Anna and Ariel. Lindsay, thank you. One, Air Force veteran Andrew Luttrell, who had been accused of stolen valor, has chosen to address the allegations and share his side of the story. The accusations against Luttrell involved falsely claiming military service and decorations for personal gain. However, the situation took a turn when the Department of Veterans Affairs confirmed both his enlistment and deployment. We brought you a story about a couple who started a Great Falls business. Falls Inc. is a new tattoo and piercing shop offering a place for veterans and active military members to spend time and share their experiences. Owner Andrew Luttrell expressed his passion for helping veterans because of his past. Since that story broke, KRTV has received numerous emails and messages concerning or even questioning Luttrell's enlistment. Luttrell was unable to provide what is known as a DD-214 form, which indicates military service. But we were able to confirm with the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs that Luttrell was in fact enlisted in the Air Force from October 2004 through April 2008. The letter signed by Luttrell's social worker from the VA states that he was deployed in Afghanistan and was honorably discharged. Luttrell says he feels his character was called into question by some people who commented on social media. I'm not going to sit here and be called a liar for what I've done, but I'm here to prove today to Great Falls, to whoever, the vets, the, the active military, that I am what I say I am and that we're here to help. 
Luttrell says he joined the Air Force because he looked up to his father, who was also in the Air Force. He says he has the utmost respect for those who serve, and that's why he opened Falls, Inc. Falls, Inc. offers 50% off tattoos and piercing to veterans and active military members. If you'd like to read the full letter from the Department of Veterans Affairs and hear more from Luttrell, you can find that on. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification for more exciting top fives to come. Only here in Top 5 Trending. See you next time. Adios.